human resources, human capital, people and culture. This single vocation has many names. HR professionals are responsible for what is arguably the most critical success factor within any organization, its talent. HR Studio Podcast brings you interviews from HR and industry thought leaders so you can listen, learn and leverage. Welcome to HR Studio Podcast, building the next generation of HR leaders. HR Studio is brought to you by AJ O'Connor Associates. To learn more about our sponsor, please visit ajoconnor.com and be sure to check out the AJO blog for additional HR learning tools and resources. Welcome to HR Studio Podcast. My name is Linda Holavik and I'll be your host for today's session. We're joined today by Patrick Sweeney, accomplished author, senior executive, and now leadership and transition coach. Yes, a transition coach, but not in the traditional sense at all. He has become a student of positive psychology, both by personal experience and by education, having earned a master's degree in positive psychology from the University of Pennsylvania. He has become an optimizer of change. My words, not his, uh, but it seems to fit. Uh, and he's all about helping people create new possibilities for themselves and for others and helping them to achieve extraordinary personal and professional growth. So welcome, Patrick, to HR Studio. Well, thank you, and I, <laughs> I'm very touched, an optimizer of change. <laughs> that's you. Thank you. That's, that's lovely. <laughs> it's great to <laughs> have you. that with me. Yeah, terrific. It's, it's great to have you with us today. So, um, let's jump right into it, uh, Patrick, if you don't mind. You're yeah. a student of uh, positive psychology. What is positive psychology, and why are you linking it to transitions? How does all that work? Well, it was actually it was great fun to become a student uh, of positive psychology, particularly with, with Marty Seligman, who is the founder of the field. I see. And I got into positive psychology, Linda, really because I found negative psychology to be such a drag. <laughs> I mean, it was so, but, but Marty, Marty's whole, when Marty Seligman became president of the, of the American Psychological Association in 2000, hmm. and at that point he, he put the gauntlet down and he said, you know, psychology has done, you know, a, an okay job of helping some people who are struggling. You know, sometimes through counseling, sometimes through medication, but, but he said, that's only half of it. Hmm. Why don't we look at people who are flourishing hmm. and figure out how we can create more of that in our society, in the world at large? Hmm. And that notion of figuring out what works mm-hmm. and then how to turn up the volume on that, mm-hmm. I-, I loved it. And I, I've been following Marty Seligman since I, I used to. I told him I have a, uh, a copy of Learned Optimism, which he wrote in 1990, and it's all marked up and, and the pages have gone from yellow to brown. Uh, <laughs> But uh, and I, I told him I would embarrass him by bringing it in sometime. Good, good. But it, it, I was thrilled that notion that mm-hmm. we can turn up the volume on our strengths, that we can become more positive, more resilient. Mm-hmm. I was drawn to, mm-hmm. and so in his book Flourish, yeah. I read where he actually had a program where you could, where I could get a master's degree mm-hmm. in positive psychology at the University of Pennsylvania, which was just a train ride away, yeah. uh, while still working. Yeah, well, that's and it's, oh, it's an incredible program. <laughs> um, you, you get to study with Marty Seligman, with <laughs> Angela Duckworth, with Adam Grant, with Carol Dweck. <laughs> um, and I was, I was so excited, so thrilled, <laughs> uh, when I found out about it. Yeah. And at the time, I was president of a, a company that was helping other companies hire and develop people based on their potential. So it played right into this. Wow, it came right together. Hmm. Oh, it it seemed like a perfect fit. Um, I I just co-authored a book, which became a New York Times business bestseller. So I thought, this is perfect. And I, and I, in Hmm. all honesty, Linda, I thought, this is, this is going to be a shoo-in. So Mm -hmm. I applied, um, and got interviewed. Yeah. And looking really forward to it. Yeah. And I didn't make it. Hmm. I, I was, oh, no. I found out that I was a finalist, but I wasn't accepted. And I thought, oh my God. And I was stunned. I was really taken, I was floored. And I was, you know, I, when I found out, I went for the longest bike ride. 
He just, you know. He needed to recharge, huh? I had to shake it off. Time. I had to recharge. I thought, geez. And I thought to myself, okay, you know what I'll do is mm-hmm. I'll reapply next year. Hmm. Just, and fast forward, next year comes around pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. And I've got these two voices on my shoulders. And he tried, uh-oh. In other words, one is saying, go for it. Give it your all. You know, let them know that you really want to, want this. You know, rewrite your essay. You know, yep. turn on the volume of what, let them know how important this is to you. Yeah. And the other voice is going, do you really need to hear a second time that you're not what they're looking for? <laughs> I mean, are you, are you a slow learner or something? Yeah. Do you enjoy punishment? Yeah. And, right, right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so I, I wasn't, I went back and forth. And I talked to, to my wife, Donna, about it. And Donna mm-hmm. said, are you kidding? You you want this. You know you do. Go for it. Yeah. Give it your all. Yeah. And I was so glad that I listened to her voice and this, mm-hmm. this voice on that shoulder. Because mm-hmm. I did. And the second time I applied, I got accepted. That's, yeah. Terrific. And that was so much sweeter, <laughs> I believe, than, than yeah. the first time. And also sure. taught me a lot about resilience and optimism. I was going to say the optimist in you. One out <laughs> in that uh, dialogue yeah. between. That's great, though. Great. And, and that's interesting in terms of the optimist winning out, Linda, because mm-hmm. resilience, resilience. I think we all get knocked down. We all get you know, so resilience is you know, and none of us like it. It's not like oh, good, I want to go do that again. Yeah. yeah. But resilience can um, it, is how we deal with that. How long does it take us to shake that off? Mm-hmm. And hmm. do we learn something from? it? Right, so that you're even better for round two. Can I ask you a question, Patrick, because that that brings something to mind. You are focused in the area of transitions, and you're talking about resilience and getting Mm -hmm. up again. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What can our listeners learn from you about how you've put those types of dynamics together and help people to stay in the ring, so to speak, and to get, like you did, back on the horse a second time and to not remain down when they right. off. Right, right. I, I think, I think one thing is to realize the, the similarity, the connection, as well as the difference between resilience and optimism. Okay, great. Resilience is, 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 you know, what do we take in mm-hmm. and then what do we take out of that experience? I see. In other words, when we get knocked down, you know, we get, you know, turned down, we get rejected, we, yeah. we, we, we fail. Something happens, whatever it is that's negative that we wish hadn't happened. Yeah. How long does it take us to shake that off? Mm-hmm. And then not just that, but there was this character in, um, the Terminator, that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Yeah. And Arnold would throw everything he had at this guy and the guy would melt. <laughs> And then he'd come back, back again. Yes. and he looked exactly the same. Yes. He didn't change at all. And mm-hmm. not only was it that look on his face, but the idea that he didn't change, mm-hmm. I think, scared us. Yeah. So when when you get knocked down, what did you learn? Yeah. Take time mm-hmm. to, to, you know, to look inside yourself, to look at the world around you, mm-hmm. and what did you take from it, and what are you going to do differently the next time? Mm-hmm. For instance, for myself, mm-hmm. I was raised to be very humble. That was that was a core value. Mm. You know, bragging would not be the right thing to do. Okay. And so I always found it difficult to talk about myself mm-hmm. that way. I didn't mind other people doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but but doing it myself was not natural. Mm. So when I was applying here and being interviewed, okay. I had to get over that. Yeah. yeah. I, but I had to do it in a way that was natural. So I had to think through that mm-hmm. and come at this situation in a way and say, this is important. Mm-hmm. Got to get over this one thing. Yeah. yeah. And the other part of it mm-hmm. is that's the resilience. That's resilience. Part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The optimism part. Mm-hmm. Marty Seligman has has a, a brilliant way of describing what what optimism is. Mm-hmm. He says it it it's it's not just our view of what happened or what's happening, mm-hmm. but optimists view the the world view the future. Mm-hmm. Is positive. Mm-hmm. In other words, as optimists, we believe mm-hmm. that things will be fine. Things will work out. Mm-hmm. And he calls it three P's. There's, it's a matter of permanent, pervasive, and personal. Mm-hmm. So how do you take things? Mm-hmm. In other words, for, for a pessimist, 
if something negative happens, mm. he or she thinks it's permanent, the way mm. things always are. Mm-hmm. It's pervasive. It's all around me. It's not just this one thing, but everything I touch seems to turn that way. Mm. And it's personal. It's happening to me. I see. Mm. If something negative happens to an optimist, mm. he or she thinks it is not permanent. It's temporary. Mm. It is not personal. It's just happening. I'm going to get through it. And it's certainly not pervasive. It's not something that always happens. It's just this one thing. Hmm. On the other hand, if something positive happens to a pessimist, yeah. he or she thinks it's a crazy fluke. Is that right? I, it's not personal. I have nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. It just somehow happened. Probably never happened again. Interesting. Whereas an optimist views it as something that he or she had something to do with. It influenced, I see. Yeah. And helped make it happen. Mm-hmm. So that frame of mind Mm-hmm. You know, that, that, as Carol Dweck says, a, a growth mindset mm-hmm. has to do with carrying us through, not just personally, but I think all of this stuff works personally as well as professionally. Yeah, yeah. Wow, what a great explanation, really, of, of the three Ps and how they apply uh, differently, obviously, to both pessimists um, and optimists. Patrick, is... Is it possible to learn? Obviously, you are a student of positivity and positive psychology. What tips maybe could you share with our listeners? Maybe there's a couple um, that could help people to learn how to be more positive or learn optimism, if that's an appropriate question. <laughs> it is. No, and, and thank you. It's a great question, Linda, because what certainly in terms of being a student, first of all, um, when I was accepted into the program, there's times when we're younger that we think, oh, we could be the youngest to do this, you know, or the first to do this. Mm-hmm. And I was actually thinking, I could be the oldest to graduate from this program. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I knew that there was a shift going on yeah. uh, inside mm-hmm. of me. And there's actually uh, a woman mm-hmm. who's a psychologist who was 10 years older than me that graduated a few years before. So she, she took that away. Uh, but the notion of being a student of positive psychology and what we can bring to the table is that, yes, in fact, we can, hmm. psychologists argue, you know, they go back and forth yeah. on uh, how much of it, you know, are we born with it? How much do we learn along the way? Yeah. Are there parts of this that... um you know, we can change what can't we change. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, what, what um, the science is coming down to right now mm-hmm. is that there's about 40% of who we are that we can change. 40%. Which mm-hmm. is a big amount. That sure is. You, yeah. that can, you can shift significantly. Mm-hmm. You know, you might not, on a color spectrum, for instance, you might not go from being an orange to, um, you know, a green. Mm-hmm. But she might go from being a very pale blue to a very deep blue. Oh, I see. You know, so yeah. you can we can take what's inside of us mm-hmm. and deepen that potential and strengthen it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. It, are there one or two things people perhaps can try who are listening to us now um, and try those intentionally, uh, perhaps with a degree of repetition to help the behaviors literally stick, you know, um, become uh. habit, uh, if you will. That's a great way of putting it. How do you make it stick? Mm -hmm. And how can we be intentional? Mm -hmm. How can we be intentional Mm -hmm. about that? And that's, that's a very large part of it is, Mm -hmm. is connecting intentionally. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the things I'm, I'm thinking in particular, Linda, of one uh, client I was just coaching as a manager. Okay. And he's working inside of a company and they deal they deal with problems day in and day out. They're constantly solving problems. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, he said there was a negativity building up rather than the idea that, yeah, we solve problems. Hmm. There was so many problems being solved day in and day out that it was just draining. And he said hmm. I, it was chipping away at him. Hmm. He said he felt the leadership wasn't as positive as they could be. But he said, I was taking it on too. Hmm. And rather than simply offering him some advice, I mm. just said, and what, what do you think you could do differently in this situation? Because mm-hmm. I knew the answer was inside, and the answer is inside of all of us, yeah. right? Yeah. And he said, he thought for a minute, and he said, you know, when I see something positive going on here, and I see it all day long, mm-hmm. he said, I can pause and just take, you know, half a minute and tell the person that. Mm-hmm. 
And he said, you know, when I think about it, yeah, there's these negative things and there's something inside of us, you know, whether it's the amygdala or whatever, that fear or flight thing. But the things that are wrong can often weigh heavier than the things that are positive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so he said, what I'm going to do is not only say out loud to other people, nice job, mm. really appreciate that. Mm. But he said, at the end of the day, I'm going to send an email out. Mm. And, so, and highlight, he said, three things. He decided it was going to be three things in, in our, in our mm. session. Mm. Three things. And before I leave, I'm going to send that out. It really worked well. Wow. Very and nice. By doing that, that simple change, yeah. Yeah. he ended up, when I got together with him two weeks later, there was a glow about it. <laughs> That's he great. Said, he said, everybody's plugging into this. He said, he said, I've helped to move the dial, the needle. Yeah. And he said, the actual leadership of the company is looking to do this now themselves. <laughs> Very good. So the idea of just even saying out loud, we can do it. Mm-hmm. It's just half a minute yeah. and help somebody, let somebody know how, <clears throat> how we were impressed. Yeah, yeah. We so can do that. What I hear you saying is to um, be aware of when to be intentionally focused on the positive, finding the good. I tend yeah. to believe that you'll always find what you look for. <laughs> That's right. You That's know? right. Uh, right. And you said that in a much more eloquent, eloquent way. Uh, but that's what I hear you saying. And that is a terrific tip for folks that are listening, uh, to us today. And I'm quite sure that there is a host of, uh, of research, um, books, frankly, that you mentioned that some of your colleagues, uh, that you went through the program with perhaps, uh, authored. I know you have a book, uh, coming out in early 2018. So would you mind perhaps bringing us to close today by sharing how our listeners can learn more about you and your offerings uh, and uh, this topic of uh, positive psychology. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, the coaching practice that I have, I developed a coaching practice that helps people look at themselves as they're in a transition. Those transitions can sometimes be personal. They can yep. sometimes be professional. Yeah. You know, it can be working at a company where, the, where you get caught in a merger and all of a sudden the rug's pulled out from under you. Yeah. That's a big transition. Mm-hmm. You can also be transitioning into your first job. Right. Or you can be transitioning from being an individual contributor to a manager mm-hmm. or from being a manager into a leader. Mm-hmm. Each of those transitions, I believe, mm-hmm. are opportunities sure. for us to reinvent ourselves, yeah. to see yeah. ourselves differently. Yeah. And often we can feel during those times that we have kind of one foot on the dock and one on the boat, yeah. and we're not quite sure. Yeah, and so really what I've done. developed is a coaching approach mm-hmm. that helps someone look at their strengths, look at who they are mm-hmm. at their very best, yeah. and to see what has worked in the past that they can carry with them into this new situation. Yeah, that's great. Often when we're in a, in a transition like that, we don't think about ourselves as our best. We just think, oh, there's so much going on at that point. Yeah, and you're feeling down. Not only down, but distracted and, and everything. So I, I, I can completely understand. So right. uh, do you have a website that you could share with our viewers, perhaps, Patrick? Yeah, the website is thesilverrealigning.com. Okay. Very so good. it's the silver and then R-E-A-L-I-G-N-I-N-G, the silver realigning. Very cute. I with like the idea that. of realigning ourselves with our values, with our strengths, yeah. and with our future. Yeah, terrific. Terrific. Thank you. What, what can you tell us about the book that you have uh, coming out? I know, uh, I think I know Tom Gartland, uh, with your input, has, uh, has a book teed up to come out in this whole space of positivity. Yes. Yeah, it is. Tom, Tom Gartland is uh he used to be the president of Avis Budget Group North America. Mm, yeah. Tom is a man of I, I could go on about him for hours. <laughs> he, he is a man of enormous compassion. Mm. He's strategic. He knows how he knows business. He understands strategy mm. inside out. Mm-hmm. But his focus is on people. When he says mm. what I've learned is when you focus on people, the profits will follow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. His firm message is not for us to separate our personal lives from our professional lives. Stop separating who we are from what we're doing. Yeah. In fact, he says leaders who do that are primarily responsible for creating disengaged yeah. organizations. Yeah. Yeah. And so Tom, I've had the honor of writing this book with, 
Mm. Um, it's by Tom Gartland with Patrick Sweeney. Okay. And the book is called Lead with Heart. Okay. Terrific. Uh, Terrific. And we'll see that sometime in the spring of 2018. Yeah, yeah. That sounds yeah. good. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Patrick, for uh, for your time today and uh, for sharing uh, some of your wisdom and learnings. I'm quite sure uh, you could talk about this topic um, much longer than 15 minutes, 20 minutes. But I uh, appreciate your time very much and encourage everybody uh, on the on the phone uh, listening to us today or uh, in their car or jogging to please uh, look for the uh, book coming out, uh, Lead with Heart. Uh, and follow up with Patrick at his website, thesilverrealigning.com, to learn more. Thank you very much, Patrick. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Linda. That was Take wonderful. Care. Thank you very much. You bet. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to HR Studio Podcast, building the next generation of HR leaders. To download the show notes and discover additional information from this week's episode, please visit hrstudiopodcast.com. To join the conversation, we invite you to visit our LinkedIn group, where you will connect with a growing community of current and future HR leaders.